Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is The West Block, Politics, Perspectives, and Players. Security during a pandemic. NATO Secretary General Jens Stolenberg says it's time for NATO countries to stop depending so heavily on China for critical personal protective equipment and medication. Time to start making it right here in NATO countries. And while the alliance is used to dealing with military enemies, COVID-19 is a whole other story. What kind of security threats does the virus present? Joining me now is NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Secretary General. Thank you so much for having me. I'd like to start by asking you about an experience that your country had, and that was with the horrific shooting in Norway. You were prime minister at that time. 77 people, I believe, killed in that shooting. Canada has just experienced our worst mass shooting in our history. What advice do you have for Canada, and how did your country change after that? First of all, I would like to express my condolences to all those who lost their loved ones in the uh, shooting uh, we saw a few days ago in Canada. Uh, I think what we have seen uh, in Canada, in Norway and many other places is that violence comes in many different forms. But it's also always about innocent people lo losing their lives. And, uh, and I think that at least one of the lessons we learned in Norway is that the fact that we stand together uh, in the aftermath, in the wake of such a terrible uh, uh, incident, uh, that, that mobilizes uh, uh, comfort, support to those who really uh, were affected. Uh, sir, the NATO alliance is facing really an unprecedented threat when it comes to coronavirus. This is uh, not your standard adversary. You can't... Uh, for example, gather intelligence on their meetings and their plans. It's invisible. It hides among us. How is NATO dealing with this very different kind of security threat? Well, NATO does is that we provide support uh, to NATO allies, and we see also that the military across the alliance is, is uh, essential in providing support to the civilian efforts uh, 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 fighting or combating the coronavirus. This is a health crisis. Uh, we see uh, health workers on the front line, and I would like to commend them because they do a very important uh, job every day. But I also recognize and, and welcome the fact that uh, uh, military capabilities, military personnel, uh, provide uh, uh, support uh, from, any, from everything from uh, controlling borders to, uh, to, uh, to uh, setting up field hospitals uh, to, to disinfecting public spaces uh, and also deploying different kind of uh, uh, military um, medical capabilities. So uh, it, it shows that the military uh, provides a kind of surge capacity uh, which helps the civilian society dealing with the health crisis. You've talked about your concerns when it comes to China and NATO countries relying too much on that country for things like personal protective equipment and medical supplies. Do you believe that that's a security threat, a national security threat to NATO nations? I believe that uh, the COVID-19 crisis reminds us of the importance of resilience, uh, the importance of that we are able to, uh, to, uh, to provide necessary equipment, uh, uh, protective equipment, medicines uh, in times of crisis. And uh, I don't believe that every nation can be self-sufficient or produce all kinds of medicines and, and equipment themselves. But I think we as NATO allies have to look into uh, issues like stocks. Do we have enough stocks uh, uh, to deal with this kind of crisis? Are we too dependent on imports from uh, uh, countries, uh, what should I say, outside the alliance? Uh, so one of the lessons we have to learn, some of the homework we have to do after this crisis is to look into uh, yeah, uh, how to be uh, less dependent on uh, uh, imports uh, on, uh, of these kind of essential equipment dealing with uh, this kind of health crisis. Have you seen examples of, uh, I guess, NATO adversaries or, or just nations perhaps who aren't that friendly to NATO nations trying to take advantage of the situation security-wise when it comes to COVID-19? I think the m most serious thing we have seen so far is different attempts uh, of, uh, of uh, what I call disinformation, uh, propaganda, using this situation to try to divide us uh, and to undermine the, the, the cohesion, the, 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 the solidarity within the alliance. So we have seen, you know, extreme uh, or very, as I say, uh, different attempts to, to portray the coronavirus as something totally different from what it is and also making NATO allies responsible uh, for the virus. That's absolutely wrong. 
uh, and, uh, and we have to respond to that. And I believe that the best uh, way to counter propaganda is not propaganda, and the best way to counter disinformation is, is, is actually to, 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 to provide facts. Uh, and, uh, and I believe that the truth will, in the long run, prevail. And I believe that journalists, free and independent press, is perhaps the best weapon we have in countering disinformation and propaganda. You've called on countries like Canada to spend more on defense. With all the spending on coronavirus that NATO countries are having to do, are you concerned that coming out of this, not only will countries not meet that 2% GDP, but in fact will start potentially slashing their defense budgets? I think the challenge we are faced with is that uh, the coronavirus is a serious threat and we need to mobilize against it as we now do as, uh, as uh, countries and allies all over the world. Uh, uh, but at the same time, the uh, COVID-19 crisis does not mean that the other threats and challenges we see disappear. Uh, we don't have the luxury of either addressing uh, security threats or health threats. We need to cope with uh, both of them at the same time. Uh, a more assertive Russia uh, being responsible for aggressive actions against uh, uh, the Ukraine or support of the Assad regime in Syria. Uh, or the, the shift in the global balance of power with the rise of China or terrorism, these threats and challenges, they don't disappear because of the COVID-19 crisis. So the reality is that we need to be able to both invest in health, in health but also invest in our uh, military security. Mr. Secretary General, that's all the time we have, but we truly appreciate you joining us. I know this is a very busy time for you. Thank you so much. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mercedes Stevenson for The West Block. We'll see you again soon.